What's up, Dub Nation? This is Rich at Let's Go Warriors. And today I'm here to discuss how the Warriors can actually go after a free agent based on my estimation between $10 million and about $13 million salary for this upcoming season. So let's delve into that. I want to, first of all, start out by saying that I've been working on this for now over a month. I looked at my first text to my co-host Dean Chambers about this idea of using a non-tax mid-level exception that, as I said, can get you a free agent of maybe up to $13 million of salary in the next season. And that was on April 30th, literally two weeks after the season ended. Some of the reasons why it's taken so long is I've started a new channel called NBA Up Close, and I'll put the links in the description. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll put some links as cards here in this video that I'm editing. And not only was it a lot of work, as you can see all the content I've put up here, which is very similar to what we do at Let's Go Warriors. But also, you know, it just, it just takes a while. And when I started it, about April 30th, really, there were still four teams left in the NBA finals race. So check that out when you get a chance. Please subscribe. I'd love to get to three digits. We only have 95 subscribers on that so far. But moving on, yeah, this is a recording that I'm doing a, a uh, sort of a, a how-to video that I love to do and I, I want to do more of that just really educates people on what's happening. And I hope to do this more. Now, we've got already a lot of live streams going on, and you'll see that this whole format kind of feels like a live stream if you haven't been to any of ours. And the other thing that's going on is right after I hit stop on the record button here, we're going to do a rewatch of the 2022 final. So that's where you get to ask any and all questions of me, whether it has to do with 2022 or not, because it's just an open discussion every single time. And actually, I have mentioned this particular idea of the NTMLE, the non-taxpayer mid-level exception, since the May 6th live stream, which is way down on this list if you go in the live section. And I'll put the links in the description, if not on cards on this video. But take a look at what I said here. Let's take a look here. 56 minute mark. And uh, Clay has to come back at no more than Draymond. If you do that, you're about 11 million under the um, first apron. Okay, so I won't just play that video for the remainder of this. Of course, I'd like to just tell the whole story. And that's what's going on here is I have this article that I wrote on our website, letsgowarriors.com. So I did do that on April 26th, four days before I came up with the idea uh, for looking up for a free agent um, at the double digit level. And so go check that out as well. I'll put the link in the description. One thing I failed to do on, on here is to find pictures of people like Dante DiVincenzo. So let's look for Dante DiVincenzo. There you go. As a Warriors. And there he is right here. So we'll make that our main screen here. Dante DiVincenzo is an example of a free agent that we pursued that we could not pay more than the taxpayer mid-level. As I say that, the picture disappears under the paywall over there. And the Warriors have been stuck only being able to find free agents at about the 5 or $6 million level 
Dante, I believe was four or 5 million. And of course we could not afford to keep him because that's all we could do to gain more free agents while the team was stuck way above the tax line. Now you have a thing called the second apron, which makes it heavily punitive to be so far over the luxury tax. And if you just look at the salary cap sheet of the Warriors, I like hoopshype.com because they kind of nicely show multiple years out. And if you add up this column and then make some assumptions because it is a spreadsheet and you have to make some assumptions to get to the bottom line. The assumption that I made in this article on the website is that we'll just pin Clay's salary for this upcoming year at the same thing as Draymond's. And this all has formulas and whatnot. So if you update this, I have a spreadsheet that the available non-taxpayer mid-level exception, that number changes. Right now you can see that it's 11 million. So if Clay comes back at a level that's next year at least the same as Draymond, then we can go and find a free agent and pay that free agent up to $11.2 million. And, and the, then the other assumption though, is right here. Gary Payton would have to redo his contract. I'll put a link in the description but and uh, a card. But he said as at his exit interview that he would be willing to redo his contract. So I just tried anything. I, I just went 9 million divided by three. Now, Gary Payton probably would do that, but then his agent would probably nudge him on the, on the shoulder and say, Hey, you shouldn't be such a pushover. Let's ask for something else and let's, you know, get Joe Lacob and them to bend a little on this spreadsheet. And you can check all of the math and all of that. It's right there for you. Obviously not in an actual spreadsheet. This is a, a screenshot. And the first apron's at 179 million. And you can look up all the other levels for example, the tax line, the luxury tax line, I mean, and the second apron. And there's a nice little graphic that I think it was Bobby Marks of ESPN tweeted out. So go check that out. Anyways, there's other assumptions to be made other than Gary Payton. The other one is that Kavon Looney is no longer a warrior. So we would either waive him or trade him out. And I would replace this 3 million charge because he's guaranteed 3 million. So if we, if we waive him, then it's going to be 3 million right there. Of course, we could just trade him, which makes more sense than letting him go for nothing, which I would love to talk about in a future video. And so these are all estimates that, that can be changed a little bit. Some of these are fixed numbers, obviously. Kaminga, Moody, Pajemski, Trace Jackson Davis. All of these are pretty much fixed. And then do we expect Dario Saric to come back? Don't know. But anyways, the veterans minimum cap hit is the equivalent of having two years of experience. It's close enough. Okay, guys. So. 11,210,657. That's probably not going to be the exact number, but it's close enough for our discussion purposes where you can say, hey, let's go and shop for a free agent that we can pay 11 million or so. Now, I want to, I said 13 million when I started out this discussion. And that's because, come to think of it, and this is a new idea thanks to my co-host Dean, what if we paid Clay Thompson a hundred million dollar contract over four years to come back? In that way, and by the way, this, this gets us technically under the tax line, okay? 
the total salary here. So then we can use the non-taxpayer mid-level, which is an amount that you need to be under the first apron, okay? It's a little bit too complicated to explain here in this video. So you can go look it up. I checked all of this math with Keith Smith, one of the renowned cap, cap experts out there. And he said, yeah, you're good to go on this. Assuming some of these things such as Peyton and Looney. Now, so with Clay, I said, we could maybe get a go out and look for a free agent at 13 million. The reason why I said that was because we could reduce Clay to 22 million, but then give him a contract that's four years. And in that contract, maybe pay him 100 million where you go 22, you step it up every year 22, 24, 26, 28, with the understanding that the cap will go up each year. So it becomes less and less of percentage of the total cap space. So if Clay can come back and we negotiate him at below Draymond's current salary, then who knows, we can maybe go out and spend 13 million. And this is like at least double, even 11 million is about double the usual taxpayer mid-level exception. And we couldn't use the taxpayer mid-level exception last year because we were over the second apron. So we think that there's a high chance that the Warriors who are actually pretty close to the uh, tax line, it's an opportunity for them to go under the tax line. I'll put the link in the uh, description, but Tim Kawakami did a podcast that had Joe Lacob on it. And Joe said it might be a good time to try and get under the tax line. So this is really an exercise on how to get under the tax. The other thing that you'll notice on here, I forgot to mention, is that, oh, and the, you see Usman Garuba, there's rumors out of Europe that he will go and play in Europe. And so these are all just sort of, you know, placeholders for minimum contracts. That's been the name of the game for the Warriors and Bob Myers for years. Dunleavy is inheriting a salary cap sheet structure whereby we're paying a lot to Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Andrew Wiggins, whose salary slot is big because it used to be D'Angelo Russell, which used to be Kevin Durant. So you can kind of see the history of that. And so it's important to note that we're making the assumption that Chris Paul isn't here anymore. So I deleted Chris Paul and replaced him with also a veteran's minimum. So let's move on a little bit. Who's out there? Well, if you look at this ESPN article, you can just Google ESPN.com list of free agents. This is how I literally found my two ideas, which is Derek Jones Jr. or Kyle Slomo Anderson. You just go to this article and I looked one by one. And then what I did was I went back to Hoops Hype and I looked at their team's cap sheets and I looked at say Derek Jones Jr. and I said oh he's playing for the minimum for Dallas so he's going to be a free agent because there's zeros out here or I saw Kyle Anderson's name on the list and I was intrigued by that so I went to Minnesota's cap sheet and I saw that he was making 9.2 million this year and is a free agent so maybe 10 million 11, 12, or 13 million, let's say, would be enough. Is that enough to get Derek Jones Jr.? I don't know, but it's an idea out there that basically plants the seed that we could get under the tax line and then use the non tax mid level exception, in which case that number is influenced by the first apron line. 
So you look at Derek Jones Jr., you look at the Dallas roster, and this is what we do all the time on our live streams. How much is Tim Hardaway making? Because he plays in the same position as Derek Jones. In fact, Derek Jones starts over Hardaway. You wonder if Derek wants to, because of that fact that he starts over Hardaway, wants to command a salary in that range or not. Who knows? We'll see, right? Free agency is pretty much unpredictable. So you try your best. Now, there are a couple of key dates coming up. And the way to look at when contracts have an option date is to go to spot track. And if you look at uh, Chris Paul, well, let's look at Gary Payton first. Because his option date is coming up on June 19th. You can see it right there. Spot track has all of this information, whereas hoops hype is kind of harder to find there. So June 19th, which is coming up in three days, is, or maybe less in case I do the editing and then release this video on Monday. In two or three days, Gary Payton is going to have to take the option or not on his $9 million. And if he does not, then that might suggest that he is indeed restructuring his contract in terms of he would just opt out of the $9 million. They'd have a, a gentleman's agreement that, okay, you're going to sign this new contract for fewer dollars next year which again is very important to get under that tax line. Every little bit of millions counts here. So Gary going from 9 million to 3 million or, or less, whatever it is, let's, let's say he goes half to 4.5 million, then that's, those are just a few more millions that really help us to get under the uh, tax line. The other important date coming up is Kavon Looney. Now, it's been suggested that we could just waive them, and this spreadsheet is under that scenario where we just waive them. This is kind of like a worst-case scenario. And if we just waived them, then it would be a $3 million charge on the cap sheet because uh, he's guaranteed three of the $8 million. So if we go back to spot track, you'll see that seven days before the start of the 2024 moratorium, which is – for all intents and purposes, seven days before July 1st, the first day of free agency. I, I could be wrong about that, but in any case, it's coming up. Start of free agency would be July 1st. So roughly seven days before that would be June 24th. So that's only five days after Gary Payton's option date. And Gary has control over this. It's a player option. By the way, Chris Paul finally is at June 28th, which is the second day of the draft. The draft being two days this season on the 27th and the 28th with the first round and the second round. So things are going to start taking shape. Now, Tim Kawakami, the aforementioned Tim Kawakami, did mention on his podcast that with any of these dates, the Warriors could renegotiate with the player to push that out a little bit if things are murky. Now, if, if they don't push things out, then maybe we can assume, just maybe, that things are not murky. And if things are not murky, that's actually good news because that would be a hint that things uh, with Clay Thompson are going well. Now, I need to do a whole other video on Clay Thompson. If things were flowing normally here on Let's Go Warriors, I would have already done a reaction video. We have done a reaction video, so to speak, on the live stream. And that was literally just the other day when we watched game four together. So there's a lot to talk about with Clay. I, I have my thoughts on that. And I actually do have sources with uh, Clay's camp. And also I need to reference Anthony Slater, 
Marcus Thompson and Tim Kawakami, they did a podcast as well to kind of talk about what are the roster moves they can make. It's not quite as at a level of detail as what I've done here. And I don't know that anybody else has suggested going the non-taxpayer mid-level exception route. Usually it's just some blockbuster trade. And we basically need to do a video on Andrew Wiggins as well, because in the previous live streams, Dean and I have opined that Wiggins might not be a warrior during this off season anymore. And we will go into reasons why, but when there are mentions of blockbuster trades, the warriors could be in your first question as a fan, as a, as an erudite fan should always be, why would the other team want so-and-so player, whether that's Wiggins and then on the flip side of Wiggins is actually Jonathan Kaminga. And we have also come to the conclusion that Kaminga JK is pretty much untouchable. The reason why is because, and I'll do a separate video on this, maybe on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis coming up, we shall see. But with Jonathan, it's like owning stock in a startup company in Silicon Valley, whereby the startup is going to go have an IPO. You'd be crazy as a venture capitalist to sell your shares in the startup. And it would be done as a private sale because it's not a public company yet. That's the definition of going public or an initial public offering, AKA IPO. I come from this world, I, I used to be involved in venture capital. So that's the example that I give is that Kaminga is about to go IPO. He's about to have a huge salary over here and the Warriors need to keep them just because, as you can see on this table as a whole, it behooves you to have bigger salaries as long as the player is playing to that level out in the open market. So, for example, Steph is going to make $55 million next year. Is Steph worth $55 million out on the open market? I'm sure everybody watching this would say yes. And then you just go down the line. Clay Thompson made $43 million last year. It's the end part of his contract that he signed when, when he was right after the 2019 finals. Uh, so this number seems big in terms of the other players out there making 40 million. So that's why I love the hoops hype salary cap tables is because you can jump around to different teams and see who else is making 43 million or who else is at the top of their respective team cap salary cap sheets. All right, so I wanted to reference that there are other podcasts and channels talking about these things, but I don't know that there has been anything quite as granular as what I've done, which then when you zoom back up, this tells you that, hey, the Warriors could realistically go after a free agent in the 10 million, 11, 12 or 13 million dollar range depending on certain assumptions up here so i like kyle anderson why because of the same reasons that draymond likes kyle anderson i won't play this video because it actually was on tv and we're not supposed to play video that's from tv on here but they need kyle anderson out there so obviously draymond sees some value in slow-mo, and so do I. While he is rather a slow-footed player, he does the right things and executes game plan both on offense and defense. I'm sure you guys all know about the screen that he set off the ball uh, for Minnesota in one of their games to, to win the game against Dallas. 
their only win. So Kyle Anderson is is a realistic target. Derek Jones, what I love about Derek Jones is his defense. And we got to go back to what Dunleavy said on the podium in his exit interview. And that was the Warriors need to improve their defense. The other things we need to improve, he said, was the length and they want to get a shooter. Derek Jones is not a shooter, but he certainly checks the other two boxes in terms of defense and length. And he's certainly gaining super valuable playoff experience as we speak. So that about wraps it up here for me. Thank you so much for joining me in this explanation. And I hope that you will join us for more talks like this. I hope that I'm able to do editing on a more efficient basis so that these happen and hope to get through all the other struggles that I'm going through in my life. And so I wish you all the same. Good luck in all the struggles in your life. And the thing is, is it took me over a month to finally do this video, to finally sit down here and just get it all off my chest. I made it. I showed up. And I encourage anybody out there who's going through any struggles, just keep going. Eventually, it'll happen. Appreciate you all. Hope to see you all on our live streams. In fact, I got a live stream to rewatch the game five of the 2022 finals in exactly 17 minutes. Take care, everybody. Just us, Brate, and let's go, Warriors.